How's it going? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs and I want to thank you for joining me today. Today I'm featuring a vehicle that is not one of my own and it's the first time that I've had a vehicle on this channel that has not really been anything that I've owned. Uh, this is a 2020 Ford EcoSport SE and you might be wondering why do I have a 2020 Ford EcoSport in my possession today well it's because I want to know if the Echo Sport is a vehicle that I can personally deal with owning I've had this thing for a little over 24 hours now so I'm gonna tell you guys my pros and cons and overall if this is something that I would be willing to drive on a daily basis instead of my Ford Fusion. Now go figure of all days, it decides to snow. <laughs> it didn't snow yesterday when I took possession of it, but it snowed today in a short amount of time. So like I said, this is a 2020 Ford Echo Sport SE. We will just go real brief, uh, you know, a quick tour. Um, I've done MVS features of this thing before. There's another vlog where I had a short test drive video of a, um, I want to say it was either an 18 or a 19. Um, so not a whole lot has changed since these things have debuted, but if you want to know more facts about this vehicle, like I said in my older video pile on this channel, I do have uh, at least two other videos, I think, of the Ford Echo Sport. And you know, in a way, these things have always kind of intrigued me a little bit because, you know, this is pretty much like the sibling to the Ford Fiesta, which I have had for four years now, over four years. Uh, my wife drives that one, and that car has been fantastic. So this is just about the same as the Fiesta. It's a small subcompact SUV. And you know, I enjoy driving the Fiesta. Is this something that I would be willing to have every day, you know? So let's just go ahead and go over, you know, the features and what this particular one has. And I'll give you my pros and cons, you know, right before we wrap the video up. All right, I started it back up because it is indeed freezing out here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway, so this uh, this 2020 Echo Sport is featured in the ruby red metallic tinted clear coat. I do like this color. Um, you know, there's this red. There's also a brighter red. But this is a pretty nice red. It kind of reminds me of uh, my Bonneville that I had many years ago. It's got automatic headlights with projector beams, just halogen, but they do have uh, LED daytime running lights as well. Lower fog lights next to the amber lights. Metallic finish on the front grille. Lower air dam, of course. This one does have 16 inch wheels. Turn signal markers on the side mirrors, which I don't think are heated, but we do have our little blind spot mirrors there. The weird marks that you see, this car has been sitting for months with the packaging still on it and it kind of flaked off. So this just needs to be you know, taken care of in detail, obviously. Um, color matching door handles. Again, sticker. <laughs> Incandescent rear lights. Some chrome accenting across the back there. The bumper does have the rear park assist sensors and your reverse lights as well. Antenna on top with satellite receiver. And that's pretty much it. It looked better yesterday before the snow you know, with all the slush and stuff. It's a good looking car. 
It's a good looking car. This one does have the uh, intelligent access. So key fob in pocket. As long as the key fob is near you, you just touch the handle and it'll unlock. The interior has the ebony black color scheme. Plastic still on all the seats except the driver's seat. It started coming off so I just took it off. But that is what the seats look like. Both front seats are heated on this model. Door trim includes your door handle, door locks, your power mirror and window controls. Driver window is auto up and down. Door pocket with integrated cup holder as well. Dark metallic accenting. The driver's seat is powered. It does have manual lumbar support also. The front passenger seat is all manually adjustable, I do believe. And the back seat, again, not a whole lot of leg room for taller people. But the seats do fold down. Let's see if I can get it from this. There we go. Yeah, so they do fold. And the cargo area does feature a swing gate, what they call this. And there's really not a whole, you know, not a, not much to really complain about when it comes to space with the seats up. It's really not that bad. Obviously, your seats down, you get more room. This will come off. And there's also a floor here, like an adjustable floor. You can adjust a couple of the heights there, and you can put things underneath this, you know, in case you wanted to maybe keep more out of sight. You know. Now this being in SE model, it does have you know some of the extras up from the S, which would be the base model. So for start, you know we've got the driver information display with you know additional graphics. Um, a base S model would also have the driver information display, but just without this you know these kind of graphics. It's more just the text aspect of it. So there's that, and of course we have luminescent gauges. It does have automatic headlights and fog lights. On the steering wheel you've got your controls for the driver information display, cruise controls underneath, and your audio and voice activation controls and phone controls here as well. Wiper controls are on the opposite side, opposite stock. Ignition, obviously, Just push button ignition. This one does have the 8 inch Sync 3 touchscreen display. Uh, I do still have the plastic on it, I didn't want to rip that off. So, Sync 3 also includes voice command, USB compatibility, Sirius XM satellite radio, with subscription, of course. And, of course, you know, some additional menus, such as, you know, for your vehicle options does have Ford Pass Connect, which is cool. That'll actually, um, you download the Ford Pass app and you can view things like your vehicle maintenance stats, fuel level, oil life monitor. This does have remote start capability, so you can actually use your phone to remote start your vehicle. Down below, a couple of air vents, your emergency hazard switch. Uh, single zone automatic climate controls. As mentioned, heated seats are here. Down below is your auto start um, starts uh, off switch and your traction control off also. Two USB ports, shifter, two cup holders, handbrake, storage pocket, center console with removable top tray. Over on this side, we've got a small storage compartment there and your glove box. On the ceiling, you got two map lights, your sunroof controls. Today's uh, version or model, I should say, does have the um, optional sunroof. Uh, not an auto dimming mirror. Sun visors with mirrors, but no vanity lights. Oh, I lied. They're on the ceiling. I just now noticed that. Wow. 
So then when you cl shut the, the visor, it shuts the light off. <laughs> I did not notice that. Uh, I don't think there's anything in the back. There might be cup holders anywhere. No. They're probably in the door. Yeah, so this really isn't a bad vehicle. Really is not a bad vehicle at all. And to top it off, this one is equipped with the one liter three cylinder engine. The EcoBoost turbocharged engine. 123 horsepower. Connected to the six speed automatic transmission with select shift. It's not a bad little engine. Not a bad engine. So here we go. Is this a vehicle that I can picture myself driving day after day for many years? I don't know. Let's go over the pros and cons of what I have kind of found out about this car. And uh, yeah, if I like it or not. Now one of the greater things about this car, my first, um, my first pro to, to go off of for this list yeah, surprisingly enough is the ride quality um, you know it being so compact and you know small it is a little higher off the ground but you know what the ride quality I feel is one of the stronger suits of this car um, is it as comfortable like as my fusion no maybe not but I, I do feel like it's a lot, you know, it's more comfortable than my Fiesta. Um, so, you know, you're really not feeling smaller, you know, road abnormalities. Um, obviously, when you get into bigger things like any other vehicle, you know, you're going to notice a difference. But um, for the most part, the ride of this thing is very nice. Um, it handles well also. The steering is very responsive and for a car of this size it does not take much to get this car to change direction if you need it to brakes are very strong again for a smaller car doesn't take a whole lot of stopping effort and of all days in this uh snow that we had come down out of nowhere today you know even the snow um, it handles pretty well and this this one here is just front wheel drive it's not the all-wheel drive version um, I would not want an all-wheel drive version because honestly I don't feel like I need it you know we get some pretty crappy weather here in Ohio is it enough for all-wheel drive to some people yes but regardless if I have all-wheel drive or not I usually like to take my time in the snow um, a lot of people don't and I think that's why they rely on all-wheel drive but I have no problem with just a front-wheel drive car this thing was driving pretty well and handling pretty well on the roads that weren't treated yet when we had all of the snow come down uh, earlier this afternoon so you know overall and oh and noise you know the engine note and such is also quiet if I turn this heater down and I know the camera might pick up more but road noise and engine noise is actually not too bad these roads on this side of town are actually pretty rough. So if you do see me bouncing around, it's because these are not the best roads for me to be driving on. But you guys get the idea. So it's it's a pretty good ride. I'm, I can't complain about the ride for the, the type of car that this is. Now our second pro on this list is comfort. I think this is a pretty comfortable vehicle you know, despite the fact that it's pretty small, and I'm about six feet tall. Now, the way that the seat is actually positioned now, I still have plenty of leg room, and I'm actually pretty comfortable at the wheel, um, you know, and just driving the, the car as is. I really didn't have to adjust too much when I got this one. Um, steering wheel is tilting and telescoping, so I got the wheel to where I need it to be, but, you know, I have uh, been finding every excuse possible to, to take this car out, and you know uh, drive it you know for you know you know hour or so you know without really getting out and stuff and I I don't feel any kind of body fatigue or anything when I'm when I've you know been driving this thing I'm actually still really comfortable and 
uh, the seats, you know, they have like a firm support to them. There's not a whole lot of side support, like not a whole lot of, of bolstering, but um, I feel like I really haven't needed it with this particular seat for some reason. So I really cannot complain about the comfort of this, of this, uh, you know, car uh, as far as like the seats and stuff. And um, like I said, space, you know, up front anyway, I can drive this car very comfortably despite me being tall and not a whole lot to complain about uh, when it comes to the comfort in this vehicle. Another thing that I really like about this car is the driving position. Um, not only is this car higher than your sedan and whatnot, but you have a nice driving position. You're higher up off of the ground. Um, the windshield, you know, you've got this windshield that is away from the, you know, occupants of the car. I feel like I've got some good road visibility visibility all around this car is really not bad there's really not too many blind spots in this vehicle so i do for sure like the driving position i like i like this higher up position and i can actually go higher if i want because the seat hasn't even been adjusted to its full height so you could always do that as well my fourth pro uh, for this uh, vehicle would be the features. And, you know, I did kind of discuss all that just a little bit ago. You know, everything from the touch screen um, to the, you know, USB, uh, you know, uh, cruise, automatic lights, heated seats, automatic climate controls, the auto start stop. You know, the, the, this car is very well equipped, uh, you know, for the price range that it is actually sitting at so I think the features of the SE are actually uh, a definite pro compared to you know maybe most of the uh, features that you would find on maybe other vehicles that are in a similar trim class to this so the features of the vehicle is definitely a pro the fifth pro that I have on my list is actually the fuel economy this one liter 123 horsepower three banger with the turbocharger obviously uh, produces amazing gas mileage in the long run. Now, I have put 66 miles on this car since yesterday, and as of right now, it is averaging 24.8 miles per gallon. Yesterday, I did more highway driving, and the average was actually up to about 35 miles per gallon. So that's going to depend, and being that this is a brand new car with 66 miles on it, eight, actually 80 miles total, 81 miles, you know, um, the car is still learning, you know, driver adaptations and whatnot. So it's it's going to learn more about how you use the car and obviously adapt your fuel economy to your driving habits. But for the most part, you know, the fuel range seems to be pretty decent, uh, not too terrible. And the uh, oil consumption of the car, too, is actually not that bad. And I'm not saying it's eating oil, obviously. It should not be eating oil. But I'm talking about oil changes. Um, this is a small one liter engine. It takes 4.8 quarts of oil. So when you go to go get your oil, it's usually gonna be five quarts. Um, you know, you're gonna pay for five quarts. Depending, uh, you know, comparing it to like the Fusion, which is a 5.7 quart engine, I'd have to pay for six quarts. So you're actually saving a little bit of money by one quart less compared to that standard. So it doesn't use as much oil, need as much oil, um, you know, in this engine because it's so small compared to some other engines out there. The next pro on the list, I think it looks good. So it's got some good looks. I like the way this car looks. I like its shape. It's a good looking car. So I definitely think the looks of the car belongs on the pro list. That being said, another pro for this vehicle on my list is how compact it is. Um, the compact thing can kind of go both ways. This is the pro aspect of the compact. You know, it being so compact, it's actually easier to maneuver, especially for, you know, uh, an SUV type vehicle. So as far as, you know, uh, maneuvering and maybe trying to get into some tight spots or something, in my case, trying to 
squeeze between two other cars in my driveway when I'm backing out. <laughs> this thing really is uh, its easy to maneuver because of its compactability. So that's the pro aspect of it being compact. And one other pro to add to this so far, it doesn't have the DCT transmission like the Fiesta. And even though the DCT transmission gives the Fiesta a sport feel, everybody knows by now that they do have issues with the clutch packs in it. So for a while, when I first actually reviewed the Echo Sport in 2018, I thought it did have the DCT transmission. I was wrong. And I think I mentioned that at some point in another vlog after that. But it is a conventional automatic transmission and it does have the select shift with sport mode so you can actually manually shift the transmission yourself if you're feeling that need to have a sport feel um, but yeah no dual clutch transmission and that's a pro in the long run now it's time for the cons I do have a little more cons than I was expecting to have, but would these cons really make or break the deal of maybe owning this vehicle? I really haven't determined that yet, but here are the cons that I have found for me when it comes to the Echo Sport. Now, one of my first cons is going to be the engine. Um, it's a one liter. It's a three-cylinder. It is turbocharged, but, you know, it's still, I feel, can use some more power. <laughs> it's not bad. Um, you know, like I said, 123 horsepower offhand. I don't know what the torque rating is, but, you know, it's, it's a small car already, so it's not really that big a deal. It's definitely something... It's no race car, by all means. And once it's actually in motion and you go to give it some, you know, some uh, throttle, it actually responds a little bit better. But I think part of the problem is possibly the turbo lag that you get from the engine. Turbo lag is actually pretty common on a lot of vehicles with a turbocharger. Um, and this one, you know, I think, I think it kind of shows. It might just be something that you have to get used to. Um just because it is such a small engine and putting out so little power, I could imagine without a turbo, it would probably be putting out like, I don't know, 80 horsepower or 90 horsepower. But with the turbo, 123, it's not terrible. Uh, but I could imagine it using just a little more, just to give it a little more oomph. Um, but overall, it's really not bad. It's not bad for the size of the vehicle anyway. So, con. I consider it a con. Now another con that I found in my situation happens to be the way that SYNC 3 picks up my track information. And let me explain. When I listen to music in my cars that have had the SYNC system, I put all of the music that I want to keep in the car on a USB drive. And for the most part, I never had a problem with this until now that I've noticed. So the way that I like to listen to my music is I'll pick an album and I usually like to listen to the album from beginning to end. I know people today usually have playlists that they'll make or they just will listen to songs in a random order. But, you know, I'm old school. So I, if I pick an album, I usually like to listen to it with the songs in the correct track listing. And what I found, we'll just, I'll show you. Um, if I go through here and I pick my, you know, artist and uh, we'll just say Aerosmith and we'll pick just push play. Now the songs that are listed are in alphabetical order. Um, on the other sync systems that I've been using for years, if I pick the album, all the songs are listed in the correct track order. Like this song. I'm pretty sure that's the last song. And um, this is the first one. Uh, that's the third one. So, like, I know, you know, some of the track listing. Um, the only thing that... That's really the only 
gripe that I have about the system so far, but I have noticed if I were to back it up a couple menus where I'm at the actual home screen for the device and I go to explore device, it actually kind of shows you the raw files on the flash drive. So if I pick the same album and there we go. So now with it showing like the raw file names and stuff, it'll actually display it in the correct track listing. And if I select it to play, it actually plays all the songs in the correct order. I know you can't really read it because of the writing, but. So that's one way that I've found to do it. Another way is to actually use the voice command and tell it what album to play. If you know what album you wanna play. So if you tell it to play album, just push play, it'll come up and play it in the correct order. But I was just kind of confused that it wasn't going to let me pick the track listing in the correct order by using the actual artist and album menus. See, now it's showing it out of order again. So I don't know. Uh, I was kind of surprised by that. Is that a big deal? No. Um, I say it's a con just because it would, it's going to take something to get a little bit used to. Uh, if it were mine. And on this topic, another con that I have with this, no CD player. Um, you guys who have been following me for a long time know that I'm old school and I still, from time to time, like to listen to CDs in the car. But this car doesn't have a CD player. That would be the end of a long era for me, having a vehicle without a CD player. So, either I'd have to put everything that I wanted to listen to on the flash drive, or have, I'd have to find an alternative way to get CDs in here. I know they make portable CD players with Bluetooth receivers, so I could always get a portable CD player with the Bluetooth and sync it up through here. Big deal. To most people, no. Because a lot of people today don't like to buy CDs, but me... I still do, so in a way, it is a little bit of a big deal for me. Can I find a way around it? Yes. It's still a con now, in my book. Now do you remember how I said the compact of the vehicle was a pro and a con? Well we went over the pro, here's the con side of the compact. In my opinion, it being compact, there's not enough usable space. Um, for example, the glove box. That basically is for the manual, if you keep the manual in the car. It's a pretty thick book too. But this is the rest of the glove box. There's this little tray here. It doesn't look like it does anything. Yeah, there's really nothing underneath it either. So that's that has to stay there. And then that's pretty much the rest of your space for the glove box. It's a very tiny glove box. The center console, same thing. It's deep but it's really not wide or long, you know? It's just what it is. This thing, you, you could put a pen in there, that's kinda cool. But if this is sitting in there, if you have something tall in there, then who knows if that'll actually fit. You might actually have to keep this out and put it somewhere else, you know? So, I mean, there's that. You got a couple of, you know, spaces down here. Door pockets are decent size. But even in the way back, you know, it being so compact, you lose standard space. You know, there's just, if you're gonna haul something larger, chances are this, the, both seats are gonna have to come down, which is not a big deal. But even then, you know, who really knows? I wouldn't know what I'd be able to carry in this car if it were mine. Um, so, I mean, the standard space back there, we looked at it, it's not too bad, but, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the space. It's definitely, you'd be able to get larger things in, in this thing compared to like the Fusion. Obviously, you can't do anything like that with that kind of car because it's a sedan, but you do have the option to carry some sort of cargo with this because it's all open. But I don't know. Obviously, it being compact, you don't have as much standard size for uh, carrying capacity, you know? So, in a way, it's like a con. One other con for me is, and I kind of already talked about it, but not really about it, it. 
and that's the turbo. I never really wanted to have a car with a turbo um, because I'm always afraid of the fact that, you know, hey, what if something happens to the turbo? You know, a bad turbo can damage the engine, then you're in trouble. Lack of oil changes can damage a turbo. But I always change the oil on time, so if this were my vehicle, would the turbo last? Probably, unless some other kind of an unfortunate event happened. But oil's always clean at the proper interval, which would be 5,000 miles, and turbos need oil. So if you keep the oil clean and changed always, turbo shouldn't have an issue. But do I consider the turbo to be a con? In a way, yes, but I also know without the turbo, this three-cylinder would be an absolute dog. So I don't know. The turbo, I did have it as a con. Undetermined, I guess. One other con that I'm not crazy about for this particular, you know, car is there's no spare tire. You have the air compressor, you have some tire sealant in case of an emergency, and that's it. Cars today, most cars, a lot of cars, do not have spare tires anymore. And that's for several reasons. Um, spare tires take up space. Spare tires also add weight to the vehicle. So without a spare tire, you gain a little more space for some, maybe some other much needed equipment. Uh, and as far as weight goes, you're gonna save on your, your fuel economy because you don't have that extra load of the spare tire weighing the car down. But I still don't like the idea of not having a spare, and it's becoming very common these days. So, I don't know. Even though it's supposed to help with fuel economy and such, I still consider that to be a con. You never know. That sealer stuff may never work out in your situation. And really, the only other gripe that I have about this, it's not really a gripe, and I don't even really consider it to be anything major, but the cup holders. The nice thing is, they're actually low. Um, that could be good and bad. In the case of it being good, they're out of the way. So if your arm is actually here and you have some drinks in there, even larger drinks really, with straws, your arm, you know, because I'm always holding onto the shifter, your arm is not really hitting anything. Uh, some other cars, they're in the way. So in a way, that's kind of nice. However, with how small this area is, two large drinks <laughs> with the round, big round cups don't fit in there too well and they're either lopsided or tight to get out. And I know this because my wife and I had some drinks in here last night and that's what happened. Obviously cans, perfect size. Medium sized cups I'm sure would be fine too, but if you're somebody who likes larger drinks, then you're gonna have a problem Big deal, not really. Inconvenient, eh, it is what it is. Other awesome things that I do like, but you know, aren't really enough to make the list or anything. Headlights are actually really great at night. High beams, it's still kind of bright, but high beams are really great also. The stereo system in here, not too shabby. Uh, my opinion, I uh, could use a little more low end. I like my bass. But it's very clear. There's a couple of tweeters up here in the pillars. Got your door speakers, and there's some more speakers in the back, obviously. So sound system's really not bad. Backup camera with this screen is very large. It's very nice with the guidance lines. And this one having the backup sensors does have the little uh, you know, radar sensors with the beeps and shows you how close you are getting to the object. You obviously can zoom in as well if you're not sure how close you're getting so that's definitely a plus there yeah I think that's it I think I covered everything so yeah I've given this quite some thought and overall I do enjoy this vehicle quite quite much uh, the longer that I have it in my possession the more I really do like to drive it the more I can get over some of the gripes that I've talked about, you know? So it's actually a very, it's a very nice vehicle. 
and a lot of people might diss these just because of the fact that they are small and maybe underpowered. But for the most part, you know, working at the Ford dealership, they may also be reliable because we don't see these come in for anything at all other than regular oil changes and such. I don't know. So, could I live with one of these? I possibly could. Gives me something to think about, huh? So, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and also check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's all that I've got, guys. I will see you next time, so thank you for watching. Take care.